For this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient, Becca, and Becca is a 16-year-old female who stepped into a small hole in the ground while ambulating home from school. The patient denies an audible pop at the time of the incident. <laughs> the patient presents with minimal pain and intermittent catching at end ranges. During the extension, which of the following is most anticipated during overpressure? So we have A, empty, B, bony, C, springy, and D, very firm. All right. So let's go up to the top of this question. This particular one, we're talking about what? Infields, right? So we've got to keep that in mind as we're going through. But before we get there, we have to understand what is the pathology that this patient's pre presenting with? Or is the patient presenting healthy? Well, let's knock it out. So we got Becca is a 16-year-old female who stepped into a small hole in the ground while ambulating home from school. That's the first thing I want to kind of, you know, really look at. Stepping into a small hole, all right, in the ground while ambulating home from school. Now, what pathologies are associated with stepping into a small hole in the ground? Anybody thinking about anything particular? Maybe MCL, LCL, ACL, PCL, meniscus, I mean, quad strain. Like, what's kind of going through your mind? Because what it makes me think of, I mean, because this is the mechanism of injury of a meniscus usually. Now, it could be an ACL here. I don't know. All right, so I want to continue down the line. But I will tell you, stepping into a hole in the ground, kind of rotating that knee, um, you know, that can create a meniscal tear, especially as the person's like loading the knee. All right. So I'm thinking about that as we move down. Now, it says the patient denies an audible pop at the time of the incident. Important as well. The, uh, the fact that the patient doesn't have a pop should kind of give rise to some thinking that you're doing right now. Should be like, ah, well, a pop is usually consistent with the ACL. Am I right? So the fact that there's no audible pop already, I'm pretty, I mean, I know that this is only one line, but I'm pretty much ruling out the ACL at this point. All right, now moving down to the next sentence, it says the patient presents with minimal pain and intermittent catching at end ranges. So what type of pathology would you expect to have intermittent catching at end ranges? You should be thinking of, well, catching, clicking, popping. That's really consistent with a meniscus, just like it would be pretty consistent with what other pathologies around the body. It's consistent with things like a labral tear as well. You know, because things flip up inside the joint. You got a tear that's in there. And now the patient starts to present with catching or clicking or popping as the joint's moving, right? So the fact that they have intermittent catching, I know that's already consistent with a meniscus. It's not really consistent with any ligaments, not the PCL, not the LCL or MCL. So I'm thinking that the patient potentially has a meniscal tear at this point. Now it says during knee extension, which of the following is the most anticipated during overpressure? Now I need to slow up real quick here before we look at the answer choices because some people got tripped up on this part here. It says during the extension, which of the following is most anticipated during overpressure? Well, when do we do overpressure, y'all? You should be saying, well, we do that during our examination process. You're right. But what part of the examination process are we doing it? You should be saying, well, that is something that we're doing typically during our passive range of motion. When at the end of passive range of motion, we give that extra little push right at the end of whatever motion that they have and we assess okay kind of like what is really going on here like what do i really feel and that's what we call our end feels we get that during over pressure right or we get that during when a patient when we're taking a patient through a range of motion and we get that certain feeling of resistance or whatever is stopping the motion that's considered our end feel and now we have normal ones don't we have normal end feels y'all we have what is called soft tissue approximation. You remember that, right? Soft tissue approximation, something like uh, uh, elbow flexion. I, well, I guess it's if you got them biceps, though. If you got the biceps, like some of y'all CrossFitters out there, then you got a soft tissue approximation. Now, if you're very small, that can actually be a bony, what we call a bony infield, all right? 
but for a, but for a lot of us, you have like a soft tissue approximation. Same thing with like a knee flexion. You know, if your calf is meeting your your the back of your thigh, then that's going to create more of what we call a soft tissue approximation. All right. But we also have bony approximation as a, a normal infield, something like elbow extension. You got that bony infield where the bone and bone contact meets. All right. Or the two bones meet. So that's a bony infield. And then we have tissue stretch, like a capsular stretch or just a general tissue stretch. Like if I were to stretch my index finger backwards into extension, like we get those types of normal end feels. But now I'm telling you that this patient has a meniscal tear and I'm asking, well, during knee extension, which of the following is anticipated during overpressure if the patient has a meniscal tear? Now, for those of you on the podcast, let me read through these answer choices again. A says empty. B says bony. C says springy. D says very firm. So which one of them is it? Lock in that answer right now. So let's go through A first. When do we see an empty infield? That's known as a abnormal infield, by the way. We typically see that when, though. We see it when the patient has typically significant pain. All right? Where when we're trying to take the person through the range of motion, we get to the end where the patient really won't allow us to go anymore because of pain. Well, I don't think that this is the right answer. And the reason why is because when I look up at the question, what's the patient's pain level? Does anybody remember that? Kind of skipped over that part. I didn't really give a lot of notice to it. You should have heard me say or see here that it says minimal pain. So do I really expect an empty and feel with overpressure? No. If the person had significant pain here, I would. So let's go ahead and put an X next to that one for now. Let's look at B. B says bony infield. I said that was very similar to if you're doing elbow extension and you're feeling the two bones contact there, that would be known as bony infield. Do I expect to see that with knee extension in a patient who has a meniscal tear? Yes or no? The answer to that is no. Maybe if there was like an osteophyte formation and now there's like bone, bone contact, something like that, I would, but not in this situation. Let's look at C. C says springy in in feel. It's kind of like a rebound that you feel. I don't know if you've ever felt that before. Maybe someone who had a meniscal tear uh, or some type of labral tear. Uh, You get this like rebound kind of feeling. And that's the reason why we call it like a springy block. Sometimes it's known as a springy block or a springy infeel. And it's when we tend to have something that's loose inside the joint. You know, it, it could be a meniscal tear. It could be a labral tear. Could be a piece of cartilage sometimes that's inside the joint that can create this rebound effect once you get to that end of motion, all right, or with overpressure. Springy infill fits the the question right now. It fits the clinical picture. I would expect to see, feel, a springy infill with overpressure with this patient, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and put a check mark next to that one. Let's look at D. D says very firm. And a lot of times you can get a very firm infeel when there's some type of like capsular stretch, capsular stretch. All right. So if you're trying to stretch a capsule, you know, you'll potentially feel very firm here. But the question is, is that what I am expecting to feel with knee extension? All right. Possibly you can get that with just general knee extension, but When a patient has a meniscal tear and we already know they have intermittent catching at end ranges, would I expect to feel like a capsular stretch here? No, I really wouldn't. All right. And a lot of times you can see this known as maybe like a hard capsular infeel, which is more consistent with frozen shoulder. All right. But again, am I seeing any of that right now? Do I do I expect to feel something similar to frozen shoulder here? Definitely not. That's not what I'm expecting. I'm putting an X next to that one, giving us our final answer tonight of springy infield. The answer is C. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. Musculoskeletal examination, you know, is a heavily tested area on the exam. Passive range of motion, active range of motion, resistance. All of those are a part of our musculoskeletal exam, right? Well, you can't forget about your infields as well. Could easily show up as a question. You got to know what's normal, what's abnormal, and the pathologies that create the abnormal infields. Super important for you to know. But 
I have to add this part into it as well. When we were going through the question, did you need to know your infields very well? Yeah, you did. But you also needed to have very good differential diagnostic skill as well. When we were looking at this question, you could have said it was an ACL. You could have said it was an LCL or something along the lines of that, which would have given you a different infield. All right. So we really want to make sure that when you're looking through these questions, you're accurately diagnosing the patient, looking at keywords here. Minimal pain was a key word. Because if you miss that, you may have picked empty because can meniscal tears present with significant pain? Yes, they can. So empty could have been the right answer, but the question made it specific and said there was minimal pain. 